Hey y'all, I know what you're thinking. That's not a barbecue shirt. You would be right. But there's all kinds of barbecue smoke on it. I got a pork shoulder going. It smells wonderful. Um, yeah, I just got back from recording uh, our worship service for this Sunday. So you might see this shirt again. Uh, so dressing up. Uh, Halloween's coming up. Got me thinking about costumes. Reminded me of uh, our family uh costume a few years ago we were all uh star wars characters and yeah late at night got my mind going and uh got me to, to romans 8 uh 18 to 28 which talks about how big things can come from small beginnings and that's kind of a big theme of star wars episode 4 a new hope uh, so odds are if you've seen any of the star wars films this is the one as uh, the first one released although it's episode 4 i know it's always confusing. Uh, but it was released in the U.S. on May 25th, 1977. And according to Wikipedia, so you know it's true, uh, fewer than 40 theaters ordered the film to be shown. So fearing the film would fail, George Lucas had plans to be in Hawaii with his wife, Marsha. While in Hawaii, it wasn't until he watched Walter Cronkite discuss the gigantic crowds for Star Wars on the CBS Evening News that he realized he had become very wealthy. It remains one of the most financially successful films of all time. It replaced Jaws as the highest earning film in North America just six months into release. In total, the film has earned, adjusted for inflation, over $2.5 billion worldwide at 2011 prices, making it the most successful franchise of all time. Now, Lucas made this film with a message in mind. All of these have, have a message. And they're meant to be understood by children. Uh, I got it at the time, although I didn't have the maybe the vocabulary to articulate it like I can today. But to put it as simply as I can, there's good, there's evil, and hope can come from the smallest of places. There's an essay called The Scale of Hope that says, after the last words of the iconic opening crawl drift off into deep space, the camera pans down to take in the horizon of the planet below. And suddenly, a spaceship races onto the screen, traveling away from us in an attempt to outpace ensuing blaster fire. Then, it arrives on the scene. Another ship, so huge as it enters the frame from above that it dwarfs the first vessel and threatens to obscure the entire planet. Hulking and intimidating, the fittingly named craft is an Imperial Star Destroyer. And it literally swallows the small spaceship into its hangar bay where stormtroopers and Darth Vader enter, right? The good guys, the rebels, they're this ragtag bunch, completely overwhelmed, quickly defeated. Vader is head and shoulders above anyone. And he's given that intimidating voiceover by James Earl Jones. He's in control. He will do anything to get what he wants. And this is our introduction. Supposedly, a new hope is somewhere in the galaxy, but it appears to be completely outgunned. And everything else meant to symbolize hope is tiny, right? In contrast to the Star Destroyers that dominate the scenes, you've got two droids, uh, C-3PO and R2-D2, as these two little dots in the desert landscape. Uh, Princess Leia's hologram plea for help is only inches tall. Even when Luke Skywalker, right, the hero, uh, breaks into Leia's uh, prison cell in disguise. Her first words are, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? When Luke describes his home planet, he says, if there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet it's farthest from. Yet that's the birthplace of the hope for the film. Uh, the greatest example of this scale of hope comes in the climactic fight to destroy the Death Star, the Empire's battle station. Right, it was so it was. They thought it was a moon. It was so big, but it could destroy entire planets. And um, as they begin the attack, one of the pilots, you know, blurts out, "Look at the size of that thing!" And then uh, someone else during the briefing says, "What good is a small stunt fighter against that?" Um, you know, right? And then even just you know to destroy it, um, they had to send a torpedo, a direct hit, in like a an exhaust uh, port that was two meters wide. And so what we see in Star Wars uh, is that it mirrors a lot of human experience, which is that hope is often placed in contrast to overwhelming objects of oppression. And we can find objects of oppression all around us, and sometimes we feel hopeless and helpless trying to face them. Uh, what we see in Paul's letter is that our hope cannot be seen. 
It doesn't even show up in the same frame as the oppression. Yet, uh, it is in hope that we're saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Because we hope, that inherently tells us that that the way things are is not how they're supposed to be. And that is what Paul is is addressing here in chapter 8. It was true in his day, it's true in ours. Because we've been adopted into God's family as his children, we have this inheritance. And Christian hope is anticipating that inheritance that we have not yet received. And this does two things. Uh, Stick with me. Uh, First, it helps us differentiate between what we hope for and how things are now. But second, while we hurt, while we're disappointed, we're driven to imagine how things should be. And that gives us the courage to fight to work in this present world to improve things now. We see this in verse 19 when he writes, For the creation waits with eager longing. Uh, William Barclay describes the Greek word he chose here as describing the attitude of a person who scans the horizon with head thrust forward, eagerly searching the distance for the first signs of the dawn break of glory. And if you've seen episode four, you know you know where I'm going with this, right? Well, we see this visually as Luke walks out of his house to stare into the twin sunsets, searching for meaning in the hope of a better, more fulfilling life. Christian hope, even though it appears outmatched and overwhelmed, is truly the fuel that will drive you to recognize the evils of this world, the imagination to picture what God's goodness can look like, and the courage to fight it until it becomes a reality and even to hold your phone straight. So be on the lookout for those little things today that could be providing great sources of hope. And uh, may the force be with you and also with you. Bye-bye.